We thank the Lord always, our beloved. In good times and in bad times, in sickness and in health, in richness and in poorness, when we are close and we are distant, when we are having it easy and having it difficult, we thank the Lord Jesus regardless. Our love, our faith, our hope in the Lord should never be influenced by our feelings, our emotions, our situations. Jesus Christ is way, way beyond and above every situation and every feeling and emotion. We need to follow the Lord Jesus built and based on faith built on the rock. Amen. So I'll say this. How are we today, our beloved? How are we? I can't hear you. Do you love the Lord? Are you sure? Hundred percent. Very good. Just wanted to make sure no one is asleep. I kill you. We thank the Lord. Today's gospel is according to Saint Luke, chapter 17, verses 5 to 19, inclusive. Luke 17 and verses 5 to 19, inclusive. The Lord Jesus was approached by the disciples, and they said to the Lord, Lord, please increase our faith. And then the Lord replied and said to them, if you had a faith, of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree to be rooted and planted in the sea and it shall happen. And then he went on and said, which one of you, if he has a servant pl plowing in the field or minding the sheep, comes back after a long day service and walks into the house do you think his master will say, come and sit and relax, eat something, then serve me? He said, no. The master will say to that servant, come, put me dinner and gird yourself and serve me until I eat and finish, then you can eat. And do you think the master will thank his servant for doing such a thing? He said, no, because the servant did what was commanded him and he said whatever you do to the disciples whatever you do remember you are the unprofitable servants because we only did what we were ordered to do no more no less do not expect a thank you from the master you're just following the order Now, why did the disciples say to the Lord, please increase our faith? Because prior to verse 5, the Lord said to them, He said, if you take heed, if your brother sins against you and comes back and repents, forgive him. And if he comes back and sins against you seven times in the day, and comes back seven times and ask for forgiveness, you forgive that brother. And this is why in this gospel of today, they said, Lord, increase our faith. How can I forgive someone who keeps on sinning against me every single day? It's a struggle. The Lord said, if they ask for forgiveness, you must forgive no matter how many times they have sinned against you. And then he talks about the, the unprofitable servant, a servant that works all day long and coming back after a, a long hard day and serves his master at home and then gets no credit from that master, but the servant remains faithful loyal to that master. Now the Lord is saying to all of us, when can we achieve this? When are we able 
to achieve this, our beloveds. You see, every time we read the Holy Bible, we need to look beforehand what was happening in order to understand what the Lord Jesus is saying in chapter 17. If we go back to chapter 15 and 16 of Luke, the gospel writer, Saint Luke, in chapter 15, we see that prodigal son coming back from a far country and the father said, for my son was dead and is alive again and my son was lost and now he is found. So he's talking about the return of his son who left him and went to a far country seeking his own freedom, his way, not his father's way. But after realizing going away from his father was absolute destructive move and decision to make. He came to his senses after really going through troublesome times. So the son comes back and the father says, my son was dead, but he is alive again. And he was lost and he's found now. The father called him son. But then when you come to chapter 16, this son was giving a role in his father's house and the position the father gave his son was the stewardship position. Now the son is the owner, but the steward is not. What is the role of a steward? The role of the steward is to look after the master's possessions. The master has entrusted him with his own possession and said to the steward, you look after what I've given you until I call you to me. Even though God the Father calls us his own sons, but in the house of the Father, we are stewards, not owners. And the house is the church. The Pope is a steward. Pope or Patriarch is a steward. Archbishop is a steward. Someone like me, a bishop, is a steward. We are not rightful owners of the church. The rightful owner of the church is Christ, the King, period. Even though the Lord calls us his sons, but the house is not ours, it will always be the Lord's. But the Lord entrusted this house in our hands and said, look after what I've given you until I call you home. But don't forget, the owner of the house is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, not you, Bishop Murray, not you. You're not the owner. Now why? St. Paul, in his letters to the Ephesians says the, the church is the body of Christ. And the church means all Christians, baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. So the church is the faithful Christians. And he says Christ is the head of this church. The church is the body and Christ is the head. So all of us, whether we are clergymen or just laity, all Christians, faithfuls are the church and the church is the body. Christ is the head. How many bodies is there? Only one. And how many heads is there to this body? Only one. Therefore, there are no churches. It is one unique single church which is the bride of Christ. And there is definitely one Christ and one head to this church, i.e. the body. The body can never be the head. Whether I am a pope, I'm a cardinal, I'm a bishop, I can never be the head. It is the grace of the Lord Jesus. It is the mercy of the Lord Jesus. It is the love of the Lord Jesus that said to me, you are the head of the church, but that does not mean I am the head, i.e. replacing Christ, who is the only head 
to this church, to this body. It is by grace made me the leader in the church or the head of the church, but I am literally not the head. Christ will always be the head. Will always. This position will never be vacant. No one takes the place of Christ. Nobody. How can we be successful servants in the house of the Lord? This is for the ecclesiastical order and every single Christian. How can we be found as successful servants in the house of the Lord and the church? How? How we are attached to the Lord Jesus, the way we are attached to him is through faith. What connects us to Christ is faith. And we've been doing the commentary on the Song of Solomon. And we'll come to it later on that what connects the body, the body is the church. What connects the body to the head, which is Christ. Christ is the head and the church is the body. What connects this body to the head is the neck. Now what connects us to Christ is faith. We need to be connected to the Lord Jesus in true faith. And this is where the mustard seed comes into play. He said, if you had faith as the mustard seed, you will say to this mulberry tree to be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will happen for you or to you. Now, why did the Lord Jesus bring the mustard seed when he spoke about faith. If you take any other seed and you peel that cover, you peel that shell, you will find in the, in the rest of the seeds, there are two seeds attached to each other as one, but they are two. The only seed that has only one complete seed under that shell is the mustard seed. The mustard seed has only one seed, not two connected to each other. All other seeds have two connected to each other. Now two talks about division. Two talks about confusion. Two talks about hypocrisy. One day I'm here, the next I'm over there. One day I'm moving on this side, the next I'm moving on that side. This kind of a faith cannot be connected with Christ because the Lord Jesus wants you to be faithful, loyal, truthful to yourself and be of one mind, one heart, one tongue, one language, one thought. Not divided in your thinking. Not being suspicious about your faith. Because if it's a two seeds in one, then when you pray in faith and ask the Lord to help you, then afterwards you'll say, well, the Lord hasn't answered me. Looks like he did not hear my prayer. Suspicion enters, faith is dead. But the mustard seed has only one complete seed, meaning let your faith be truthful, loyal, one mind, one heart, one thought, one language. If you have this mustard seed faith, if you truly believe in me, if you truly never doubt me, you will do the impossible. If you truly believe in me and never doubts the sovereignty of the one you are worshiping, of the one you are believing in, you will do the impossible. So number one, in order to be successful servants, I need to have faith that is undivided. Faith with no hypocrisy. Faith with no weakness in it. 
swinging one day right and swinging the next left. No, be straight. The moment we allow doubt, suspicion enter, faith leaves. So to be connected with the Lord Jesus, have true faith in Him and trust Him even if everything is saying the opposite to what you're believing. But have faith in the Lord. And then he comes and says about the unprofitable servant. No matter what you do, disciples, say to yourself, to yourselves that we are that unprofitable servant. He started talking about working for the Lord. You see, well, it's only natural. Prior to working for the Lord, we need to be connected to the Lord. Because if I am not connected to the Lord, how can I work for Him? If I don't become that body, connected to the head through faith, which is the neck, if the body is not connected to the head, how can the body receive orders from the head? How can the body function? How can the body do what the head commands of it to do? So to be connected, I need to have this undivided faith. I need to have faith that is trusting the Lord even if it is all, all signs saying otherwise. When I'm connected to the Lord, when the body is connected to the head, what follows thereafter? Deed, work. I need to work for the Lord. We as the church, all of us are the body. As we said, the body can never be the head. It is the head that thinks. It is the head that talks. It is the head that orders, commands. It is the head that protects it is the head that provides it is the head that manages everything the role of the body is to receive the signal from the head and says to the head yes sir when the body moves cannot come back to the head and say look what I've done for you you are unprofitable you were just doing what you were commanded to do there is no applause here. There is no certificates given here. There is no medals awarded here. There is nothing, no recognition. This is the true servant in the house of the Lord. You do things and expect absolutely nothing in return. Why? Because all I did was following the order of the head, which is only natural, which is only normal. What is there for you to be rewarded for? Nothing. But you see, when will this church leader, when will this faithful person serve the Lord and then at the end of the day expects nothing from the Lord, not even one recognition? When will this be able to be achieved? When we serve the Lord, i.e. work for Him, when it comes to work, two things are required for that job to be done or for that task to be done. Two things are to do with work. One is love, two is will. Love and the will are needed in order to do something or to serve the Lord. Now to, to work for the Lord, we need to choose something in order to do it. It takes the will to choose the work and it takes the love to do the work. You see, without the will, how can I choose what to do? And without love, how can I do something I do not love? 
I can only do the things I love. I will never do the things I do not love. Isn't it true? You'll never do something you hate or you don't love. So it takes love to do the work, but it takes the will to choose the work. But before choosing and doing, I need to be connected to the Lord. I need faith. Faith is to connect me in order to do what He expects of me to do, what He demands of me to do, what He requires of me to do. Now when I come to do it, I need the will to choose the work and then in order to do it, I need to love what I'm doing. Therefore, love is required and the will in order for the work to be achieved. But there is one thing. When the body is connected to the head, who is choosing the task for me? The head. Who is choosing what kind of a work that he expects me to do? The head. Who is the head? Christ. Who is Christ? God revealed in the flesh. So now God is choosing the work for you to do. Therefore, it is God's work, not yours. Do you have a choice? No. Can you do the work on your own? No. Because the work is of God's, not of ours. Humans can never do what God gives us to do unless we are connected to him in faith and we are serving him through the will willingly and lovingly. Willingly and lovingly. When are we going to say, thank you Lord, even though I worked all my life for you and I got nothing but a kick a punch and a stab. When will I thank him? I didn't get any reward. I didn't get any medal. I didn't get any rec recognition. I was persecuted and I was kicked out. When we are connected to the Lord Jesus, He will come to one of us and say, I want you to sweep the floor outside. I want you to clean. I want you to sing. I want you to serve me on the altar. All of these places and positions are equal in the eyes of God. The cleaning, the sweeping, the singing and the serving on the altar. To the Lord Jesus, all are equal. He loves us all equally. And he will reward us accordingly when we are faithful servant of his. When I come to serve the Lord and then the Lord says, here's a broom, go and sweep the floor. I get offended. How come so and so is uh, doing a much higher position, a much higher place, a much higher job than me? Why you give me the broom? You're insulting me. See now, I'm, do, I'm serving the Lord my way, not his way. I'm serving the Lord my way, not his way. Why are you offended if the Lord gives you a broom to sweep the floor. The work is not yours. The house is not yours. The place is not yours. Everything is the heads. Everything belongs to the Lord Jesus. And he chooses according to his infinite and divine will. He gives you accordingly. Each one is giving a task to complete and do. If we were all content, the only time we are content in serving the Lord in whichever way he gives us to serve him 
is when we deny ourselves, it is no longer my will, but his will to be done in my life. Then we are serve, servant that we love him from the heart and serve him faithfully and loyally, even when we are not recognized for all the hard work we've done for the Lord. Because I'm not doing it to receive credit. I'm doing it for my heavenly Father, for my Jesus Christ, to be glorified and honored and exalted. My sacrifice is to honor Him, to exalt Him, to glorify His holy name. Nothing for me, everything for Him. Now, the only way we become such servants when I am not seeking that position for my own glory. And the only time I'm not going to seek that position for my own glory when I deny myself. And what is denying myself? I need to be crucified in order not to exist anymore. I'm here to serve the Lord. I'm here for the Lord to be revealed through me to the world. It is not about me. Everything is about the Lord Jesus. Serving the Lord in his house is to glorify his holy name. I never seek any recognition, personal recognition. But the problem, when I'm doing it my way, when I'm doing it through my own will, my own choices, then if I'm not recognized, I become very offended by it. You can test a person to see if they are serving the Lord or themselves in the house of the Lord. You can test them very easily. Just take that position away from them. <laughs> All hell will break loose. All hell will break loose. To say, Lord, I love you, it's very easy. But to live these words it is very difficult. To say, Lord, I love you, very easy. But to live these words, Lord, I love you, it is extremely difficult. Because when I say, Lord, I love you, what is what is it that I'm really saying? What is the meaning behind this love for the Lord? What does it entail? Do I really fathom what I'm truly saying? Not really. Because when I say, Lord, I love you, <coughs> I lose my voice sometimes as well. You see, to work for the Lord it requires love. Why? Because if there is no love, there is no sacrifice. If there is no true love, there is no sacrifice. Parents give their entire life for their children. When the baby is born from that moment until that baby is a grown up adult, whether it's a man or a woman, nothing in between. When it's a man or a woman, the parents never cease sacrificing their life for their children. Now I'll come and ask these parents, why have you sacrificed your life all these long, many and hard years of hard work? Did the parents ever think when they gave their life for that baby, the mother or the father, endless nights, no sleep, no rest, when the baby cries, the mother runs. When the baby has a temperature, the mother goes crazy. The parents go crazy, both mom and dad. Take them to hospital, to the doctor, feed them, clothe them, change them, pay for their education until they are ready to get married. They never cease sacrificing. Have you parents ever thought that maybe when this baby is an adult is going to respect 
and appreciate your love and sacrifice? No. Why haven't you given a thought? Because when the love is genuine from the heart, all it can do is give, never thinks of taking. When it's genuine love. And when the parents work so hard, give their life for their children, they never do it for the sake of being applauded and of being given a big medal and paid for it, never. They never expect any recognition because it comes from the heart and what comes from the heart is natural. You don't think about it, you just do it. When the Lord Jesus came, and gave his life on the cross for every single human being. He did it naturally. Whether those people appreciated what he did, respected, honored, accepted what he did or not, he did it anyway. And so many people did not accept it. But he still went ahead and did it. Why? Because his love for his father surpasses everything else his love for his father surpasses everything else when the love is genuine all it does it gives the Lord says I love you so much I died for you I gave my life for you now there has to be a return of this love. I gave you my love on the cross. I revealed it. I illustrated fully. I defined it fully for every single one who wanted to accept this love. Now when you accept this love and you say, I am a Christian now. I am a member in the mystical body of Christ. When you come into this unity where we become the body and Christ become, is the head and we are connected as one person as one perfect body one perfect Christ when we become one he is the head and we the body then we need to return that love back to this head who gave it to us on the cross and therefore I'll come back and say whatever I do for you Lord I can never pay you back for what you've done for me on Calvary on the cross therefore Lord everything I do and everything I say and every sacrifice I give and every sweat I drop everything for you Lord I do not seek no recognition because I do it out of love which you showed me which you taught me which you gave me on the cross I am just giving back to you a drop of this infinite ocean of love divine love you gushed upon me on Calvary I'm not expecting any recognition. I'm not expecting any recognition. If the love is not for Christ, then the love is for me. When the love is directed for me in the house of the Lord, I have stolen the glory of Christ from him. I have stolen the glory of Christ from him. No matter what we do or say, we need to remind ourselves that we are those unprofitable, hopeless, useless servants. Everything we did, we did it because it was commanded of us to do. The head commanded the body to move and the body moved. Big deal. You expect a recognition body? No. You were doing what you were supposed to do anyway. What are you expecting in return? There is nothing. The hand was ordered to move and the hand moved. And then the hand said, why aren't you applauding me for moving? Sorry, 
you were just doing what you were expected to do. No more, no less. At the end, everything is of Christ's. The work is His. The honor is His. The glory is His. The church is His. The throne is His. The crown is His. The cross is His. The rank is His. Everything is Christ. Everything. When a church leader seeks his own glory, he destroys the church. He destroys the church. You know why? Because he invites Satan, not Christ. And when we at home as a family, husband, wife, father and mother, when we do things at home to get recognition for ourselves, we ruin that home. If the husband does things to be acknowledged and recognized for it, and if he's not, he stops doing, then the love is not genuine. The love is selfish. And when the wife does the same, it is a selfish love. The family gets divided and eventually destroyed. But when we come and say, as a husband, as a father, whatever I do, I'm doing it for my wife, for my children, and I'm doing it out of the love that I have for my family, and I'm doing it not expecting, not a single recognition, then the Lord will recognize you. The Lord will reward you abundantly on earth and in heaven. Don't ever expect recognition from people. If you are seeking people's recognition, then everything is vanity of all vanities. Do everything for the Lord's sake, expecting nothing in return. And let Jesus Christ of Nazareth give it back to you the way he chooses, not the way you force it to be done. Believe you me, the more we forget about ourselves, the more we are glorified. The more you deny yourself, the more the Lord will reveal you to the whole world. Believe you me. And this is why the Lord said, even though it's not in the gospel of today, but the disciple said, Lord, teach us how to have more faith, increase our faith. He said, you see, if your brother sins against you, comes back and repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day and comes back and asks for forgiveness seven times, you need to forgive. You know why, my beloved, you are able to forgive so easily? The day that comes, you don't see yourself anymore. It's easy. This person came and hurt me. If I don't see myself, I'm not going to see their hurt because they hurt me, but I don't see myself, so nothing happened. But you see, if I see myself and I see myself something big, something special, well, I will never ever let anyone to even put a dent on me or a little scratch. I'll shred them to pieces. But since I have denied myself by the grace of the Lord Jesus, I am here for the Lord. I am here to serve Him and Him alone. I am here for no one else but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Since I do not see myself, 
since I'm not seeking a position in the house of the Lord, since I'm not seeking any recognition, any reward, any payback, therefore whatever is done unto me, it's all good because I don't exist. So you just wasted your breath on someone that doesn't exist. You hurt me or you loved me. Both are the same to the person who truly denies himself for the Lord's name to be glorified in him. Bishop, this person loves you. Good. Bishop, this person hates you. Good. 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 This person brought you a bunch of flowers. Oh, what a feeling, Corona. It's the same. It's the same when Christ is your objective. It's the same when Christ is your goal. It is the same when Christ is your love. It's your love. It's your love. It's the same. Love one another. Forgive one another. Pray for one another. And be there for one another. Don't ever hold any grudges in your heart against no one. Don't ever say, I will never forgive this person for as long as I live. Don't ever say, I will never say hello to this person for as long as I live. Don't ever make such decisions. Don't ever say such statements. Very dangerous, very, very, very dangerous. You are offending the Lord, upsetting the Lord above all, upsetting Him. Because the Lord says, if your brother sins against you and comes back and says sorry, you must forgive. No matter how many times he does it, you must forgive if he asks for forgiveness. But you know what? Forgiving the person is one thing and dealing with the person later on is totally different thing. But whether you talk to that person again or not, forgiveness is a must. Regardless how you will deal with the person later on, but forgiveness is a must. If you do not forgive, you are disconnected to the head. You're disconnected. The moment we are disconnected, what happens? We become that prodigal son, dead. My son was dead. The father didn't say my son was lost. He put dead before lost. You know why? Because the moment we are disconnected from Christ, the first thing happens to us, we become dead. The moment the body is disconnected from the head, the body is dead. And when we die, what happens? We become lost. We're shocked why some people in the world behave in a certain way. Why are we shocked? They are disconnected from the head. They are dead, they're lost. And what do you expect from a dead, lost person? Nothing but destruction. Nothing but distraction. The moment we come back to the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, please reconnect me back to you. Give me faith to be reconnected once again with you, Lord. The moment I'm connected to the head, then the work will come naturally next. But that work requires the will and love because I need to choose the work in order to do it and I need love to be able to do it because I can only do the things I love and I can only do the things I choose to do but this time 
the work was chosen to me by my Christ, who is my head. It is his will, not my will. Since he chose it, he willingly chose it, lovingly chose it, and said, now do it as the body. If the body is connected in the right way to the head, the body will do the work willingly and lovingly without expecting any recognition because all I did as the body was doing the things I was commanded by the head to do. Why do you need recognition? Are you the head to be recognized? No. When we try to be the head, we destroy ourselves and everything else. And I'll leave you with this on an earthly level, but still connected with Christ. Husband and wife. Uh huh. For those who are not married, don't even think about it. And for those who are married, tough luck, too late. No, no, marriage is beautiful. Now, when St. Paul says, the woman is the body and the man is the head to this body, so as Christ is the head to the church. My dear son, you are the head and your wife is the body. You are the head to this body. This is the word of God, not anyone else. So you better pay attention. Now some of us think that the head now means I am in charge. In other words, now it is my word, not your word. You are just a body. Whatever the head says, i.e. the man, the wife has to follow and has to adhere to it because you are the body, you have no say. I'm the head woman, so whatever I say goes. You just follow because the body follows what the head says. But the only time you can claim this, my dear son, if you are Christ-like. Anybody home? Aloha. All right, so don't take half the truth. You need to take the whole truth. Since it's the word of God, are you Christ? In order to be the head? Now, let's come to Christ. Now, you want to resemble the Lord? As far as being the man dealing with his bride, the church. How does the Lord deal with his bride, the church, with his wife? The wife <laughs> never ever does what he says. <laughs> the Lord says, be good, we're bad. The Lord says, love one another, we go against each other, we excommunicate one another, we depose each other, we say you're a heretic, I don't believe in you unless you are Catholic, you are going to hell, and unless you are Orthodox, you have no chance, no hope of survival, you need to come back to the truth. Now, the Lord is saying, I'm the head, and the body needs to listen to me, and everyone takes it his way, their way, and they have gone and broken the word of the head, Christ, the man, the bride, the woman, does a lot of things her way, not her man's way. That's why the church is in turmoil. That's why the church is in division. That's why we don't see, recognize our right hand from our left. If we did it Christ's way, why would we be living in hell? Why would we be living in division? Why? Because we're not following the head. Now look at the man. No matter how pain in the neck his woman is, he adores her. Every time she gives him hell far from him, but he still says, hello honey, I love you baby, I love you my darling. You know what? You are my bride. And I will never leave you no matter what happens. I will never leave you no matter how difficult you are. I will never you know, you know, disregard you no matter how many times you have disregarded my order and my commandments. You know why? Because I'm the head. What does the head here mean? 
the head means not the top, the bottom foundation. I'm the head, i.e. foundation. Now I'll ask you this, what is foundation? Foundation is the only thing that carries the entire house. When you build the house on the foundation, the foundation is stuck with the house. Can't move, can't shake the house off. Because that house is now complete by the foundation. They become one. If the house is knocked down, the foundation, what do I do with it? Can't live on the foundation. I live in the house. The Lord says, I'm the foundation, that's the head. Not in charge as in dictatorship, no. I am in charge based on love, sacrifice, willingly and freely. I am carrying you, my women. I am upholding you, my women, no matter how difficult you are to me. I'll always be your foundation. I'll always be your foundation. Now the woman in return needs to respect this love. Needs to honor this love. Needs to glorify this sacrifice. I'm carrying you. When the man gives his life for his woman, the woman will do everything for that man. When the connection is right. When the connection is right. That's why it's so vital in choosing your partner in marriage so vital you need to know what you're choosing who you're choosing if you are looking for external beauty you're mistaken you need to look for internal beauty more than the external beauty if you are if you are seeking just wealth and fame and prestige you're mistaken you need to seek faith. You need to seek genuine love. The two have to be both in agreement when it comes to Jesus Christ. If you are choosing a partner, the moment you mention the name of the Lord to them, they switch off, they walk away, they change color, walk away from them because they are not good for you. The two must agree because agreement keeps love intact. Without agreement, there is no love because the moment we disagree, we depart from one another. The moment we depart, love is non-existent anymore. What keeps love together is agreement. When both agree on Christ, then the house is built on the rock. This is why if I cannot forgive my brother, and who is my brother? Another member in the mystical body of Christ. I'm a member, you're a member, and every single one of us is a member that makes up the body of Christ in his mystical body. But if this member cannot live with this other member, the body cannot function properly. You see, if the hand does whatever it likes, and the leg goes wherever it likes, the body is in turmoil. There is division, there is friction, and there is destruction at the end. But if all members are in harmony with one another, there is prosperity, there is life, there is glory, there is construction here. And how can we remain together? By forgiving one another. 
And how can we forgive one another when our faith is like the mustard seed, one seed only, not divided, one seed built on the rock. When we are connected in Christ, built on the rock, then we're able through Christ to forgive one another because when his will is done in us and when his love is working in us, anything and everything is possible. Anything and everything is possible. Love the Lord Jesus from the heart. Serve the Lord Jesus from the heart. Do it for him and him only. Don't ever wait to be paid back. Don't ever wait to be applauded for. Don't ever wait to be recognized because all I did, I did what was commanded of me by my master, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The glory is his, the honor is his, everything is his, everything. Amen? So now, when you come to serve the Lord as a bishop, whatever you do, say I'm nothing but a useless servant, Lord. It is you who did it. It is you who spoke. You preached, not me. It is you. And so true. Trust me, it's not me. You see me other times, this is not me. Sometimes I've listened to this bishop on YouTube and I got drawn to the talk and I forgot that this good looking bishop is me. And in my heart, deep down, subconsciously I think, I said, wow, what a great talk. And then I woke up, I said, that's you. But it's not you, it's the Lord that spoke through you. That's why it sounded good. But when you speak on your own, shut up, you're ugly, you're horrible, you're terrible, you're nothing, shut up. We become ugly without the Lord. Ugly. You're not in a rush, are you? Tough luck. No, no, quickly, quickly. I just, sometimes, sometimes, the Lord um, teaches someone like me a lesson so that I, he reminds me that it's not you talking, it's me. So one day, um, I was talking to a small group of people, beautiful people like yourselves. And then we prayed and after that, I started talking. Lord have mercy. When I talk, I never stop. So anyway, I was talking and talking and talking. The, the words were just gushing. You know, they were coming, flowing like a beautiful river. And then out of all that beautiful talk, suddenly upstairs went blank. I started looking for words. I found none. Trust, believe me, I'm saying it as it is. I searched for about 15 to 30 seconds trying to find one single word, yet they were in the millions gushing. And just went blank, I became dumb. And I became numb. From talking so loud, all of a sudden to a full halt. I'm looking at the people's faces, they're staring at me, wondering what went wrong. Are you okay? And I'm trying to say, there is no more words, it's gone blank upstairs. And then after those few seconds, those terrifying seconds, and I looked, as a zombie in there, or some dumb person, the Lord's voice came, believe you me, the Lord's voice came and said, let these people go home. <laughs> this is not for you now, okay? You're not going anywhere. So tough luck, tough luck, it's not for you. The voice of the Lord came so beautiful, so, so sweet. He said, let these people go home. They are tired and hungry. <laughs> and I'm still thinking about it. I said, what? He said, yeah, let them go home. They're tired. I looked at the watch. I don't wear one now, but before I used to. I looked at the watch. It was 12.30 past midnight. You think St. Paul spoke till 6 a.m.? <laughs> I was getting there. It was 12.30. That's midnight, yeah? 
And then I said, are you tired? Oh. They said, Bishop, what's wrong? I said, um, well, the Lord said, let them go because they're tired and hungry. They said, actually, we are. <laughs> I said, okay, well, then get out of my house. <laughs> when the Lord takes the words away, no matter how eloquent of a preacher you are, become nothing. When the Lord takes the spirit away, no matter how beautiful or handsome you are, we become nothing. It is the Lord, my beloved. What recognition. All glory, honor, veneration, respect, worship to the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Now I better say this, the um, absolution prayer before the Lord says, let him go home. <laughs> Let's bow our heads, my beloved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace and instill the walks of their behavior and the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith and the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen.